RuneScape is about to add a brand new Slayer Master, Slayer Monsters, and even a new Greater Ability. In this video, I'll tell you all about this upcoming update, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you like my RuneScape content, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started. The update called Unwelcome Guest is releasing on April the 11th, so next week on Tuesday. This update will add a brand new Slayer Master, 4 for free building, and more, which will require you to have completed previous quests in the series. These are the New Foundations quest and the Murder on the Border quest, in addition to also having level 10 Slayer and 50 Construction. Once these requirements are met, you can speak to Overlord Civ to start the new quest. After completing this quest, you will get access to the new Slayer Master, being the Raptor, and a new fort building with three tiers called the Guardhouse. The Tier 1 Guardhouse will give you a plus 1% damage increase on every single Slayer task, which is double to 2% against undead creatures. It will also give you a 2% increased chance to spawn elite slayer mobs during your task. The tier 2 building, which will probably require somewhere in the 70 to 80 construction range, will double this to a 4% increased elite mob spawn chance, and will also give you a 5% increased Ushapti capture rate, which will allow you to more easily collect your personal own slayer dungeon souls. The tier 3 guardhouse, which will probably require level 90 to 95 construction, will give you a 6% increased elite mob spawn chance. 10% increased damage versus Slayer targets below 25% life points. And perhaps the biggest buff to Slayer is that ultimate abilities will have a 3% chance to execute non-boss Slayer targets, which doesn't apply to abilities such as Death Swiftness and Sunshine, of course. But for something like Meteorite Strike or Omni Power using the Greater Chain ability, that's a massive buff. This is probably a bigger buff to Magic Slayer than anything else because it has abilities like Tsunami as well. As for the Raptor as a Slayer Master, he's going to be a bit of a strange one because he will be accessible to all kinds of players. This could be a good and a bad thing, but one example of his tasks that was mentioned on stream were Grot Worms. Not really a good example, but they did mention that the Raptor's tasks will mainly be undead tasks, including the new Slayer creatures I'm going to cover in just a second, but it will also include things such as skeletal wyverns, as according to the news post, Slayer creatures that are not currently considered undead will be added to that category, which means that invention perks such as the Undead Slayer perk and the Undead Slayer ability will work work on more Slayer monsters, and it even states that the Salve element will start to work on Barrows. As for Slayer points, they will scale your level all the way up to level 120 at 18 points per task without trophies. Now these trophies can be obtained by completing 3 Slayer challenges at level 30, 50, and 90 Slayer, which will increase your Slayer points when doing Raptor tasks by 5% every single time up to a maximum of 15%, meaning you can get 21 Slayer points at level 120 Slayer. As a comparison, Laniakia, also known as Ikea Girl, provides you with 22 Slayer points per completed task. After completing the second challenge at level 50 Slayer, you'll also have the option to toggle the default Raptor Slayer task length, which is quite a powerful choice, as that's basically what the Slayer Introspection Relic does at level 119 Archaeology. Now, if I understood this correctly, when doing a Raptor Slayer task, you will gain Bone Fragments on task, which you can hand in for Slayer experience, and after getting the Tier 3 Guardhouse, these will be automatically looted for you. As for the new Slayer creatures, we have two mid or low level-ish Slayer creatures, which are located just over the fort, being the Feated Zombie at level 68, and the Bound Skeleton at level 70 combat. Both these monsters seem to be weak to magic. Inside a brand new cave near these feated zombies and skeletons, we have the Risen Ghost at level 101 combat, which is weak to ranged, and the Armored Phantoms, of which we don't know the combat level and did not see any actual combat footage. The Risen Ghost periodically heals based on its own damage dealt to you, which doesn't seem to be too impactful and will probably be easily DPSable through. The Armored Phantom, which seems to be the most difficult of the four and is probably the reason why they didn't show it, will reduce your healing ability so you'll be getting less health per food or per Sardone Brew Sip, and when it gets to a certain HP threshold, so low health, it will start healing up rapidly, which will require you to do big damage to finish it off, very similar to how you would kill Revenants. Now, according to Mod Pigeon and Mod Doom, who revealed this update on a live stream, there is a way to stop it from healing, although it's probably not something as straightforward as just stunning it, or they would have said it, or maybe, maybe it is. 
Maybe it's reflecting damage on it. I don't know. We'll find out, though, on April the 11th. Now, it's worth noting that all of these creatures need to be added to the Solaire Codex for the comp requirements, and there is not a grace period in place, so you will lose your comp cape on release day straight away. Now, that is, of course, going to cause tons and tons of players to try out this content to get their comp cape back or to make money from the drop, which I'll be covering in just a second. Thankfully, Jagex has learned from their mistake, and this area will be instanced so that you won't have to hop worlds or have to, you know, fight off crashers to find a spot. This will be the case for the first month after release, and then it will be removed. Big props to Jagex for considering this issue in advance, as they could have just as easily forgotten about it, but they didn't. So thank you, Jagex. That's good to see. As for drops, these creatures will drop your basic Slayer drops, like Uncut Gems, some Salvage, some Seeds, some Noted Things, and the Risen Ghost and Armored Phantoms will drop a brand new two-handed magic ability. That ability is Greater Sonic Wave, and the goal of this ability is to level the playing field between dual wield and two-handed magic weapons. Now, these will only drop from the Risen Ghost and Armored Phantom, and can be obtained both off and on task, with the rates obviously being far better on task. The Greater Sonic Wave ability will drop as a tradable book, much like the other great abilities, and improve the damage of Sonic Wave while also giving it another ability. The damage will improve to an average of 100% ability damage, so about a 6.16% buff, and alongside giving you the regular accuracy buff on your next ability will also give you plus 100 ability damage for 4.2 seconds. Now, I'm not sure how good this is, but that shouldn't be confused with 100% ability damage. It says 100 extra ability damage. So the higher your ability damage is, the less significant of a buff this is going to be to magic, as you'll be able to use it for about two abilities, if I'm correct. Yeah, that should be right, because you can use an ability every 1.8 seconds. Now, if anything, this is going to be a buff to two-handed magic for mid-level players, and to avoid it being Switchscape, they're going to link Sonic Wave and Creative Concentrated Blast, or Concentrated Blast, to each other, so you can't switch weapon styles to uh, get the most out of these. For high-level players, I think that might just be a nerf, because they will no longer be able to switch to use both if they were doing that currently. Hmm. Additionally, they mentioned reworking basic abilities that they call noob traps, such as piercing shot, rack, and slice. Not sure if that's coming out with this exact same update, but if it isn't, it's coming in the near future. We're work reworking what we would call uh, noob trap abilities, um, such as piercing shot, rack and slice to be better filler abilities. One final thing mentioned at the start of the stream is that Mod Shogun seems to be working on a test world or test server for players to try out the proposed FS away and animate dead changes to make sure the right changes come into the live game in the future. So, that's the Unwelcome Guests update. I'm excited to try out these new Slayer creatures, as I'm a sucker for any combat content, and I'm also curious to see what those Armored Phantoms are all about. Let me know what you think of this upcoming update in the comments down below, and if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.